Greetings friends, many years ago, I purchased a remarkable series of books, a six volume series, titled The Psychological Commentaries on the Teaching of Gurdjieff and Espensky by Dr. Maurice Nicole, who was a psychologist of no little influence or import in his time, specifically of the Jungian school of thought. Um, over the years, I have read through the book. Uh, it's not written in a, a linear uh, manner, so you can just kind of bounce around. It's a collection of Nicole's um, letters to students, his, just his personal writings, essays, things that he had in various places. So, you like I, you know, I would flip through it and just read pieces. But I recently decided to start every morning by reading one commentary first thing in the morning, kind of the thinking about it as the day goes, <clears throat> and then um, at night writing down my thoughts. And then I figured, well, if I'm doing that, maybe I can do these in the morning. The morning after, I can take the thoughts that I had, the notes that I had, and share them with everybody. I'm very glad I did this because the writings are <sighs> okay. The first writing comes in 1941, which was World War II. And that is very pertinent to the time that we're, we're living in right now, where there's a lot of tension right now, and there are people actually uh, openly saying that maybe nuclear war isn't so bad. <laughs> there are influential people who are actually discussing that um, maybe nuclear war uh, should be an option. And so... Yes, reading this feels feels very pertinent because starting at the very beginning and a big thing about all of the fourth way, and actually let me say very quickly, I've been studying Gurdjieff, Espensky, Nicole, uh, J.G. Bennett, all this, this, the whole fourth way of thinking um, for a long time, but I do not consider myself like a fourth way devotee. Like I, I study other ideas and spiritual traditions um, and psychological and philosophical schools so um totally cool to all the people out there who are fourth way um like devotees but i'm not one of them but i do spend a great deal of time studying this the reason why i say that is because you don't have to be a fourth way devotee to get something useful out of this series about what i'm about to say and that's actually what i love about the fourth way i think the fourth way works beautifully with all other traditions because it's just an examination of, of yourself. And it's what I love about it. It was very concerned. It is very concerned with actionable, functional ways to improve ourselves um, on a very deep and profound level. With the idea being that that's what it's all about. Like this whole, all of this searching that we have, it's to make the world a better place by making ourselves better people. And um, the first commentary, Nicole gets, gets right into that and shares what I think are some very important insights that I am going to share with all of you. And so the first commentary is a letter that Nicole wrote to um, a student of the fourth way, and he's just trying to clarify some things. And with war breaking out, he, he begins the discussion by saying to this person that the inevitable um, linear moral progression of human individuals is an illusion, it's a myth. Even if there is progress in institutions of civilization, like even if those institutions become more effective at regulating human behavior, that is not an authentic um, personal growth on an individual level of the people involved, right? It's it's a growth of institution. So basically, you being forced to do the right thing does not mean that you're actually a better person, right? You are just a robot with perhaps better programming. And so Nicole talks about the, how the reason why this is so important is because once that veneer of civilization is torn away, you are left with people who are morally and psychologically and spiritually the no different than people from hundreds, thousands of years ago. Unless, unless, and this is the point of the work, the work, the capital uh, W, it's what they call like this, this fourth way spiritual system. Um, I've incorporated it into just how I approach life. Because like I said, I'm not a fourth way devotee, but I am a fourth way student. And I think of the work as just everything that I do to improve myself and to understand myself and to, to grow. And so Nicole talks about how 
if we are ever to move past war, right? <clears throat> Which in, that's not he's not an idealist. Like that's not his. He's not saying like, hey, we can end war. But what he's just saying is to a, a concept to think in mind is that all of this social progress is an illusion unless the individuals are growing individually. And he stresses something that's very important in the fourth way and something that I do absolutely. It, it's something that um, resonates so much with me with the fourth way. And it's something the fourth way and, and Nicole specifically in this commentary is saying that this personal growth it's not inevitable, right? And it's not a simple, and it's hard, and there are brutal aspects to it. It's not a simple matter of, um, it's not this like, uh, I don't want to say because I don't want to pick on any one particular spiritual um, school of thought. But you know, this idea that all you have to do is believe in this one thing, or all you have to do is um, create a vision board. That doesn't fly in the fourth way system. In the, in the fourth way system, and I personally believe this is how reality is, you've got to work for it and nothing is guaranteed. And something very important that Nicole talks about, the real, the real meat of the first commentary, is that he is explaining two things. Number one, he explains that the purpose of the work is to he says like tr to be able to transform the instant and what he means by transform the instant is if you are sitting here and he uses a specific example he said if you're feeling despair i believe it was like over a loved one and you are allowing the emotion to become you you know you're, you're being swallowed by despair right you can enter a different thought in your mind i think he specifically said if you were to give a conscious shock to your brain and force yourself to think um, uh, to remember your mission, by which I think he he was vague, and I remember this. It was vague, but I think he's implying your mission just in life, like why you're here. Then that can send a conscious shock that switches you out from that despair and puts you into a more conscious state. Now, specifically with things like war, this could be applied to those instances where everybody, um, where you get upset, you let your anger get to you, and you you um, lash out. Now, I've actually kind of always had an issue with the way those things are presented by a lot of these schools because I don't know how people forget. Like, it's not the people that go to war; it's the leaders that go to war and then force the people into war. So I've always found it kind of odd when people discuss war as a problem endemic to humanity in general, because that's not how it seems to me. Like in every war, it's, it's actually a small group of people that agree to war, and then the people are either coerced, tricked, or just kind of forced into it. Um, or sometimes there's obviously noble ends, because like World War II, right? I think we all agree that uh, the bad guys had to be stopped in that war. So I'm not trying to um, oversimplify things. But anyway, that's an aside. And so, <clears throat> Nicole says that is the essence of the work, right? Is, is you are be, you learning to exert conscious control so that you are not at the whim of your emotions and your ideas. And now the whole fourth way goes much deeper into that because that is like, because it, it, it plumbs so deep into how the human mind works and how we, you, our ideas possess us, our emotions possess us and take us over. And that's why, you know, Gurdjieff always said, and Espensky, they always said that we're the masses of humanity are robots, right? And we need to become conscious. Awake is how they, they often phrased it. I like to think of it as just becoming to a, a higher level of consciousness. Okay. But in discussing how this is done, Nicole makes very important distinctions. He stresses that human beings are born in essence. He uses the term essence specifically. Like this is his, if you were to have a, a, a glossary of terms uh, that are important to understand, essence would be one of them. Essence is the, like, the core of our being, right? It, it's our, our, our true self. That essence, Nicole stresses, only grows naturally from age to till about age three to four. So your first three or four years, that essence grows very naturally. You don't have to do anything. Nobody really has to um, exert conscious effort on it. It just happens. It's part of the natural cycle. But 
we very quickly reach a limit in the growth of our essence. And at that point, it becomes time for the growth of the personality. Now, another thing I like about the fourth way and another thing that, that Nicole discusses in this commentary pretty extensively, I'd say it's probably like the bulk of the commentary. He discusses that the, the growth of the personality and the growth of the personality is like you learning how to maneuver through the world and learning how to maneuver through life right it's your like your punctuality your um all our character traits it, it's it's the tools that we develop to maneuver through this life through this world <clears throat> and but what i really like about the system is you know you have a, a lot of other spiritual traditions come at that and they will they look at it as the personality is like it's false and it's bad and needs to, you got to destroy your ego like the way nicole talks about the personality is the way a lot of people talk about the ego right it's your ego identification and so often that is discussed as like a thing that we need to destroy um or a, it's an impediment and an illusion but nicole doesn't look at it that way and that's not that wasn't the fourth way's perspective on it the fourth way's perspective is that the personality is essential. Those years of developing your personality are important. They are how you maneuver through the world. And being successful in the world is important. That's something I really like about the fourth way. It's not like, oh, that's an illusion. Just do away with that. Nicola says, ideally, a person should develop a very strong personality. He uses that term, strong personality. What he seems to mean by strong personality is that you are a reliable, steady, successful person. But he does make the distinction. By success, that doesn't have to mean like that you are a famous politician or a world-renowned scientist. You could just be, or not just be, That's that sounds like it's marginalizing it. But you could be, like say... He uses specifically um, a great candlestick maker or a great butcher, right? Basically, his point is it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be in a, a position of high rank in society, but you are very solid and very good at what you do, right? Because to do that takes a level of self-mastery, a level of self-control, a strong personality, as Nicole states, so the personality is not a bad thing. You, It's a very good thing. And ideally to have success, the first stage of development is that three to four years of age, right? The, the, that I mentioned where the essence grows naturally. Nicole specifies that as the first stage of development. Second stage of development is the, the development of the personality. Also important, ideally a person develops a strong personality, meaning they're a strong person is how I think of it better. Um, or think of it better. It's more akin to how I think about it. And then the third phase is not guaranteed, right? The third phase arrives when a person has developed the strong personality. You are a strong person. You are effective at maneuvering yourself through this world, right? But you look around and it feels empty to you, right? It feels like you're looking around saying, is this really all that it is? And Nicole said that is usually the trigger moment. That's the moment when a person has the opportunity to enter into the third stage of development. Now, this is very fascinating to me because Nicole said what happens if a person decides to do this. Now, a big thing is this cannot, this will not happen naturally. You can't just, the third stage can't just happen naturally, right? There has to be conscious work um, on the using the fourth way system. It, well, Nicole was talking specifically about the fourth way system, but I don't. I, I doubt he would say that was the only system. Just the point is, it's not going to happen naturally. There has to be a strong conscious effort, and you're going to need outside help and outside resources, right? If you really want to do this, so that's interesting. But what's most interesting to me, I found this so fascinating. I, I didn't pick this up in the previous times that I read this. So he talks about that essence, like I said, and then the personality, these two forces of your being. He talks about them as like, like substantive, um, uh, quantifiable like forces. And so he said through that, he writes, through that stage, you have developed this personality. For the third stage, what happens is your essence 
it f- it feeds off of the force of your personality and that's how the essence grows so your essence needs your personality and so you're reversing the process cuz previously it had been essence and then the development of personality now the per- the essence begins to use the force in the in the food of the personality to grow itself which is that's fascinating he uses specifically the um a metaphor of a, a chicken of the yolk of a chicken he said in order for the chicken to grow it has to have everything that it needs in the yolk and it in a way the chicken itself kind of eats the yolk and becomes a chicken <clears throat> and he said that is how human progress is but none of this is guaranteed that's important to me um that it's important to me personally because I just do not believe by looking around at the world, observing nature and reality, human society, everything. I do not see evidence for this idea that your um, your progress is inevitable. Nothing's inevitable. We've all got to scrap for our meals, right? Um, I just thought of that Bob Dylan song, Going to Acapulco. I'm just the same as everybody else when it comes to scraping for my meals. <clears throat> but um yeah so it's not inevitable right if some people who develop very weak personalities are simply never going to reach this point where they they begin to feel this and they and they feel this yearning and this urge to grow and even if they maybe did their personality might not have sufficient food to enable that process it's kind of a bummer, right? Like if you're a compassionate person, you want to think, well, everybody's going to be okay, but that's not the fourth way system. And unfortunately, when I look at reality, I just, there is a brutal aspect to reality and to nature. And I have a hard time believing that, like, no, you don't have to do anything. It's just all going to be okay. That doesn't make sense to me. But anyway, anyway, I didn't mean to get off of my own meditations on this. I wanted to share what uh, Nicole wrote. And so, in discussing this process of the essence and the personality, he, he closes this first section with a very interesting idea. He says that this is actually what is being told in the parable of the uh, prodigal son in the Bible, which is um, Luke. I just, I just read it. It's Luke. One minute, one minute, one minute. It's, this is a, it's a very famous um, parable. But it's um, Luke fifteen eleven to Luke fifteen thirty two, and so on its surface, it seems like um, not the most interesting parable. It's, it's about there is a very wealthy man. He has two sons. One of his sons abandons the home early and just go, kind of goes off into the into the the wilds. And um, kind of um, abandons his responsibilities. The other son is very dutiful. He stays around and uh, he works with his father. He helps grow the business. He is a good, upstanding, upright man. One day, the son who had left returns to the father and says, Father, I made a mistake. Um, I think if I remember correctly, he's he's like he's going to starve and, and die out there in the wilderness. So he realizes he, he needs his father. So he goes back to his father, says, you know, Dad, I'm sorry. Can you take me back? And, you know, he's expecting that his father won't take him back. His father instantly, no hesitation, grabs a hold of him, gives him a hug, says he loves him. And he, of course, he's welcome. And right away, just pushes him right back into the life that he would have been living if he had stayed. No anger, no, not holding any grudges or anything like that. And the other son um, is upset. The other, the son who had stayed around and been a good, been a good son, is upset. And he goes to his father. And says, "Father, how is this fair? Like I did everything right." And the father basically says, "I love you all equally." Now, so I read this. Now, now Nicole mentions that this is what the parable of the prodigal son is actually talking about is this essence and personality thing and um and he he comments in there that all of the um the gospels are not concerned with life and what he means by life is like like civilized life you know paying your bills making food or eating food stuff like that he specifies that those teachings are actually about our internal development it's about that third stage that i was just mentioned 
And so, but he doesn't clarify exactly how the prodigal son, the parable, lines up with what he's saying. But I was thinking about it, and it's it's really probably not that complicated. So you look at the the father. Now, that I don't want to leap to conclusions. I want to see if Nicole clarifies this. So I'm going to leave what I think the father is. <clears throat> but um, so the son that left and went out into the wild that's your essence right because that's that's the thing like i said according to nicole it, it grows until you're about three or four years old it grows naturally and then it's your personality that takes over and it's your personality that manages you in this world in this life as nicole calls he always calls it life <laughs> okay and so in this parable you the essence has left and the personality has taken over the personality is doing everything right but then the essence eventually comes back and says okay i want back in on this i realize that i need this i can't i can't live alone and um and then he is absorbed back into this process at which point um that is when you're you reach the third stage of development and your essence begins to feed off of your personality in order to take you to this next um this next stage and I just I think that's really really fascinating. It's a really interesting way to read the the Bible, but also just interesting concepts and ideas in themselves. And it, it does bear up. I mean, I don't know about the specific mechanisms of like an actual living, you know, quantifiable essence, and then a living quantifiable personality. That obviously is. Um, a hypothetical and kind of abstract idea but i do know that if you look around that is often the natural progress of things right people people reach a level of success and we see it most pronounced in people who like have achieved like really great success you know people who are they make millions or they're the top in their field or whatever it is and very often those people reach a point where they just look around and say is this all it is and they then go on an inward journey, a spiritual journey. Um, and that's exactly what Nicole is referring to. He's just saying that at that point, for the next development to happen, your essence actually begins to feed off of your personality. And you do kind of see that because in a lot of those times, it, it, it often takes very, very strong um, personalities, eccentric sometimes, you know, explosive, angry type of people to get to the absolute top of the mountain. But then you see them, they mellow, right? And they, and they, those strong personality traits start to kind of fade back. So I, I, I do feel as though I see evidence of what Nicole is talking about, which is very interesting. But so that was that. That is the first commentary. I just I wanted to share. I really hope this is useful to people. I want to try to. I'm going to try to keep up with this every day. Um, which means the other installments will probably be uh, briefer than this because this one went on for a while and I'm, I, my schedule is too busy for me to do this every day. But but this is immensely useful to me to sit with these, this commentary and really think about it um, throughout the day. Like I said, I read it first thing in the morning, think about it, end of the day, as I'm going to bed, really kind of meditate, well, what did that mean? Then in the morning, I can come on and put my thoughts on here and share them with you for people who either don't have the books, people who aren't big readers, whatever it is. It helps me. It helps me. You know, The best way to learn is to teach. And I hope it helps you. I, I hope this is useful. I'll see if it generates any interest. Um, I'm probably going to do it either way, to be honest with you, because it helps me in my own development. But um, obviously, the coolest thing would be if other people also benefited from it as well. So that's about it. Peace out, my friends. I hope you have a great day. Remember, keep driving forward. Keep striving. Let's try to be the best people that we can be. I actually do think that's what this is all about. All right, peace out.